you ever been invited to a meeting and you look and there is no agenda in the meeting invite, the title is very vague, and even worse, you get to the meeting and the people that should be in the meetings not in the meeting, and even worse, you were invited but you don't have anything to give or gain from being there? Well, if you're as frustrated as I am when I get invited to those type meetings, then this video is for you. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the six steps on how to host an effective meeting. Number one, does it even require a meeting? Whatever you're getting ready to discuss or host a meeting about, does it really need a full meeting or could it be taken care of simply by sending an email? Now, you may be wondering, well, how am I supposed to tell if it could be an email or if it should be a meeting? Well, some people like to have meetings so that they can answer and clear up any questions that they may have. It may only be self-serving to them because they don't understand something or they missed something in another meeting. And now they want everybody else to regurgitate or reiterate or give their opinion on what they just heard. What I encourage you to do is to ask yourself, is this meeting self-serving only for me? Or is this meeting really required because I need several different stakeholders to contribute to the goal at hand? So that's number one. If it's self-serving, then you need to probably have a one-off with somebody who can explain whatever you're missing. Another thing, is it so simple and so easy that an email response could work? So if it could be cleared up in a few lines in an email by one or two people, then a meeting's probably not required. So if you're just trying to figure out um, what's your status on getting something accomplished, um, have you reached out to, to the vendor to make sure that they're ready to go? Um, those type things can be answered in an email format. You do not have to have a full meeting. Now, you may also need a meeting if there's going to be some key stakeholders that need to hear from people who are actually contributing to a project. And then they need to make a decision based on what they're hearing from those people in the meeting or those thought leaders. So if that is the case, then yes, a meeting would probably be required. If it can be answered in 10-15 minutes, it's probably not meeting worthy because you could probably put that also in an email or a simple phone call to that one person who has the answers that you need. Number two, make sure you pick the right time to have a meeting. Picking the time is very important and it shows how respectful you are of other people's calendar. Try not to schedule it during lunch. I know everybody's busy, but can somebody please at least have an hour to eat their lunch and enjoy themselves? And then whenever you're also picking a time, make sure you're picking an adequate amount of time. So if you know the meeting's only going to take 30 minutes, don't schedule it for an hour. If the meeting's only going to take 10 minutes, then again, point number one, maybe it should be an email. But if it really does have to be a meeting, then schedule it for 15 or 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Don't take and schedule a meeting for lo way longer than it needs to be or way shorter than it needs to be. If you know you have a 50 minutes worth of content, don't schedule it for 30 minutes because guess what? Now you got to set up a separate meeting and so when you go to the meeting people are like, well dang, well why did they just schedule this one for an hour? Because now I've got to set up another meeting and then talk about the same thing again just so we can finish the conversation. So be mindful about the time that you actually are choosing. And if you have have access to someone's calendar who you're actually booking these uh, meetings with, do not, please do not pick a meeting time that's in between, like sometimes meetings are set and there's like a little slither of time and that's available and you're like oh I'll take that little slither of time y'all people there's a lot of meetings that's going on and so if I've got a calendar that's full for that day and I just happen to have a 30 minute block throughout my whole day please don't take my 30 minute block it's just not right it's disrespectful it's unless it is a very urgent meeting if it is a meeting that just has to take place then that's fine I've seen people even send out an email and say I apologize the only time I could find that would work was lunchtime or I apologize the only time I could find was at the end of the day or they may call out one particular person who's usually an executive that says hey I'm real I apologize I noticed you only had this 30 minute block I hate to take the only 30 minutes that you have but this is very important that we get this meeting taken care of just be mindful of when you're actually doing these things and if you can if you know your meeting 
can be done in 45 or 50 minutes schedule it for 50 minutes and this is something new and that I, I don't I don't know if it's new but it's one of those things in a remote work environment I think people now think because you don't have to move from one room to another in the building to take a meeting then now it's okay to have back-to-back -back meetings well people do need to go to the restroom people do want to grab water or grab a snack or something of that nature we don't have breaks like we normally did when we were in a working environment so you could leave one meeting and then stop by and grab yourself a soda or some crackers or something. Now you don't have that liberty because people schedule back-to-back -back meetings. So if you can, schedule it for 45 minutes and therefore that last 15 minutes someone can actually use to go and take care of things that they need. And if you are the one who is hosting the meeting and you scheduled it for 45 minutes, for that next 15 minutes you should be doing a wrap-up of your own to put together your minutes, uh, put together any deliverables and takeaways and then getting that sent out immediately so that you don't have to worry about trying to remember what you were supposed to take away from that meeting and send it out later. So if you can, don't schedule it during lunchtime. Don't just find that little slither of time. Um, I don't like scheduling meetings at the end of the day either. Be respectful. If it's if people get off normally at five o'clock and you're scheduling a meeting from 4 30 to 5 30 it's probably not a good practice to do that now i understand that these things have to occur at some times and if they do just be mindful and apologize and say i tried but this is all i could come up with now number three and four are going to go together and so number three is the title of your meeting okay everybody has a fairly busy calendar and so the last thing that I want on my calendar is a meeting invite with a title that's vague okay let the participants and the attendees know what the meeting is going to be about let's say the meeting is to discuss some upcoming changes in the organization so what you should actually put as the title would not be discuss changes Okay, what changes? What, what are you talking about? Um, so it could be the title of the message is New Organization Changes for 2025. And that's what you could put as the title. So now I know that there's some organizational changes that's coming for 2025. And then your agenda is actually going to go along with what your title is. So this is going to be 2025 Organization changes so that's going to be my meeting title and then whenever you're setting up the agenda the agenda should actually have an order to it okay what are we going to talk about now you don't necessarily have to set this agenda up in a word document like this one right here shows which is a great template you can actually just put it in the body of the um, invite so whenever you're actually setting up in our example the 2025 organization changes you can actually put in the description the agenda or at least hit on the topics that we're going to discuss so it should be medicare changes for 2025 how the company is responding training document review okay so all those things are put into the actual agenda that's actually in the description that's in the invite okay so you may not have a full agenda already laid out uh, to attach to the meeting invite but at least what you can do is put something in the invite that tells me what I as an attendee should expect by going to this meeting this also helps to set me up to know whether or not I should be bringing something with me to the meeting or should I be reading something before I get to the meeting which brings me to step five and that's related material so if there's something that the attendees need to read before going into the meeting you're going to want to make sure that you include that in the description either as an attachment or a link to where they should actually go to read some people call this pre-reads uh, Microsoft email has gotten Microsoft Outlook has gotten really great where whenever you set up a meeting sometimes it can scan your email box and say hey I think this is something related to this email and it'll even ask you sometimes when you're getting ready to set it up should this be attached to this invite um, as a certain pre-read for that person to actually review but we'll go over that in another series around productivity the main thing is step five is related material so anything that you need the attendee to read beforehand or to review beforehand so you know if you're going to do a document review or in this case we're looking at organization changes um, if you already know what those 
changes are and you can actually send them out ahead of time so that during the meeting we can discuss okay does anybody have any feedback or a better way that we can actually implement or train the team on these changes then that's going to be a better use of your time versus getting to the meeting and this is the first time people are seeing the material now you do have to take for granted that because people are busy it is going to be a great likelihood that you're going to get to the meeting even with the related material being provided and it still has not been reviewed and step six is attendees make sure you've invited the right people okay nothing frustrates and infuriates me more than to go to a meeting and someone say well where's so and so and they're like oh they were not on the meeting invite and you need them in the meeting in order to be able to fulfill the task at hand or I'm in the meeting and it has absolutely zero to do with me um, and I didn't get anything from it I didn't uh, give anything to it and now it's just been a wasted block on my calendar and wasted time so if you're hosting a meeting make sure that you have the right people in attendance at the meeting so that your meeting can run smoothly so all six of these steps uh, hopefully will help your next meeting that you host run a whole lot more smoothly. There's still going to be kinks in the road, but isn't it great to have a template and a system as to how you should actually run and host these meetings and so that it makes it easier for you to put them together in the future.